For those who may watch this message somewhere in the YouTube, but teach them also, they will understand. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So today we read from Exodus chapter 18, verse 13 to 26. We also read from uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6. The message we will take from Exodus chapter 18, it reminds us about a man called Moses. Moses was a murderer who exiled himself in the wilderness. It was in the wilderness that he ran into uh, a group of girls that were taking care of their father's sheep and he helped them. He escaped because he murdered somebody in Egypt and had to spend 40 years in the wilderness taking care of the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. Yesterday, while I was here, our brother Danjima called me, called me from the prison and was explaining to me the things he is passing through. Uh, Danjima, our brother, was a captain in Nigeria army, but a world and came to the US. The same way. Moses said, he said, and he was put in prison in 1997. Today, he has been in prison for 24 years. So, the same way, Moses was exiled for 40 years because of murder. That child did not commit murder, he committed sexual sin. That ended him up in prison. And now it's 24 years. Something that gave me cause to rejoice about that gene was that he told me that he's passing through a lot of persecution. And he also told me it was in his third year in the prison that he gave his life to Jesus Christ. And recently there was a test to that. One of the warders, a white lady, came to have a sexual relationship in her jail. His jail. He refused. You know, I'm not a new star. I'm not a new person. I'm not going to do that anymore. And he was complaining to me that because he refused, he is being maltreated. What is due to him is removed. And many people are after him. He asked me to remember him in prayer. But he has chosen to follow Christ. He's a Muslim, remember. He has chosen to follow Christ. And that he will follow Christ to the end, even if it means dying in the prison, that he will not go back to sin. And so I encouraged him and said, All you did was sexual sin, you did not kill anybody. David, Moses killed somebody, and yet God still used him. I told him that you are listening to me. It is not by accident that he ended up in prison. God knows what he is doing at all times. The Bible says that his ways are past finding out. I don't know what you are passing through and you are condemning yourself. My advice would be continue in the Lord. Continue to live holy and continue to live a righteous life. Continue to stick to Jesus. 
as long as we are following Christ, afflictions will come. Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will see them through in all of them. I told him, one day you are going to leave the prisons. And not only are you going to leave the prisons, you are going to leave the prisons and teach the word of God. I told him that although Moses was a murderer, and yet God chose to use him. There were many people, Israelites in Egypt, who are older than Moses. At least Aaron was older than Moses. But God was particular that it is Moses that I will use. And I'm not sure how much about, well, Moses wrote the law, so he knew nothing that having a relationship with God. Banjima had his encounter in prisons and gave his life to Christ in 19, 2000. Moses had his encounter in the wilderness and started following Jehovah. And Jehovah sent him on assignment. The same way, God has sent me on assignment. I may not have all the qualifications you want for me to be a pastor, but he has sent me on a, 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 an assignment. And that is the assignment of being a priest. And that is what I am on. Bible says, God's calling is without repentance. When God calls you, he doesn't go back. God called Moses. Moses wasn't experienced. His Moses had all the experience that is needed. His father-in-law wouldn't say, hey, Moses, you are not doing it right. What you have to do, Moses, is to divide the level. Because you'll be burnt out if you continue this way. And what happened? Moses listened to him and divided the level. And when Moses divided the level, what happened? Things started moving smoothly. Things started moving smoothly because he divided the level. One would wonder, why didn't God tell Moses that? But it was Jethro that had to say that. Why didn't God tell Moses that? Didn't, see the, didn't he see that Moses was burning out? We did not see that he is God. But what happened? The point is that we are not bound to know everything. There is something that is important to God, and that is the team of God calling Moses, and that is to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, to bring them to the desert place where they will worship him. That is the team. There is a general reason why we come to church. Tradition of men is good, but the main reason why we come to church is to preach Christ, to preach light, so that those in darkness will see the light and repent and give their life to Christ. There was something I was writing yesterday in Facebook about deliverance. You see people running for deliverance. I told them, there is nothing like deliverance in the Bible. Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. The problem people have is that they have not agreed to give their life to Christ. When we give our life to Christ and become soldiers of Christ and desire to live a holy life and desire to study the Bible and desire to sharpen ourselves by coming to Bible study, we don't need deliverance. The problem we have is that we want to have one word in Christ and one word, one leg in the world. The two legs have to be in Christ. And for us to be in Christ, the Bible says, when a man is in Christ Jesus, he's a new person, all things pass away. The Bible says in the book of uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We are not condemned as long as we are living in the spirit. We don't need deliverance. We don't need these things the world needs. Because I have seen people that have delivered for over 10 times. They are still where they are. 
actually what they need is Christ in their life, not deliverance. What they need is the word of God. And that is why we say we have Bible studies on Thursday. Brethren, come, let's listen in the word. Iron sharpens iron. That is the way we can grow in faith. Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And how does faith come? John 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's where faith comes. And that is the way I can please God. I'm glad my brother is here today to hear the word of God. If you want to grow in the things of the Lord and remain in the Lord, you have to draw near to the Lord. And so what happened? We saw the situation of increase because Moses was directed and right. We saw a situation of increase. The same thing we saw in the Acts of Apostles. Widows from Greek and widows from Europe were fighting each other because of food, trying to change the team of the church. The widows of Greek said, we are neglected. That reminds me of a man who told Jesus, Lord, tell my brother to share what we have. And Jesus said, who am I to, 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 to be the person that will share your estate between you and your brother? That is distraction. And so the elder said, the 12 said, come, brethren, let's sit together and they appoint people who will do this and this so that we concentrate in the world. The world is meant to be and then to them. We read this from the Acts of the Apostle. The word of God is the main thing that is handed over to us. Like I said, yesterday I was here and one young man came in, a white guy. He said, I am homeless. I said, okay, can you sit down? He sat down. I said, I told him, you know what? What I have, I'll give you. I told him the story about the beautiful gate. Peter and John gave what they had. And what they had was more important than what the beggar was looking for. Because I have the words to give, which God has given me to share abroad. I told him about Christ. I told him about Jesus. I led him to receive Jesus. He, you know, he's supposed to be here today, but he's not here. Actually, by the time he was about to walk out, he said, Pastor, can I play with the drums for a little while? I said, you can go and play. That guy was there beating different beats. At the point, I walked over there and started beating the coma. And the moment I started beating the coma, he stopped. And listened to my beating. I started falling to my beating. I said, would you come here today to, to, to play the drums? And he agreed. I knew he might not come because he had no phone. Um, I was, I regretted not to <coughs> uh, walk him and buy him one of these uh, short phones uh, to get in contact with him. But I pray that the Lord, one of these days, will bring him back. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and so, what was happening in the church in the New Testament was a distraction. Where people are now trying to bring distraction to the to the, to the to what to the ministry that has been handed over to the apostles. And they were careful to bring it to the heart and say, brethren, let's settle this and focus on the reason why the church is set up. Jesus said, go into the world, preach the good news to all nations. That's the reason. And I pray that God will put this in our heart. And this calling is for every person that follows Christ. Every person that calls himself a Christian. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, if you want to be my disciple, pick up your cross and follow me. Brethren, let's find our cross in this church and pick up for the world. It's not all about business, making money. We have to balance it so that the day will come before the Lord and he asks us, what soul do you have to present to me? There are many there in the world that are perishing. What are you bringing to me? What would you say? So brethren, let us make every effort 
to occupy where we have been called. And remember, you know, so no matter the distractions that will come, distractions will come. So let us be very, very wise to know why the church exists. The church exists to depopulate the kingdom of darkness. That's the reason why the church exists. And if all of us will put our hands in the deck, before you know it, many sinners will start coming into this church and see Jesus and repent. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Help me and help my brethren to understand our calling and occupy effectively where you have placed us. Fill us with your spirit. Give us the boldness to share your word abroad, O oh Lord. When you call our people, equip them, equip us, I call them, God, equip us so that we shall not appear before you empty handed. It is important that many people who are in the world that don't know you will come to know you. And you have given us the word, help us to share it. Whether such people are coming to this church or not, Father, help us to. Shine the light you have put in us. You have put a light in us that is shining. Help us to shine it unto darkness. That people who are blind will see. This is our heart desire. This is your church. Reign in your church. We call it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.